Well, if you have your Bibles, I'm going to ask that you turn to the book of Philippians. Now, this is certainly not the first time that we have looked at this verse when we have looked at a new year. But I will tell you, this is certainly a new message, okay? Actually, I told Linda that it was going to be verse 12 through 14, but we're actually going to be looking at verses 13 and 14 here. And we'll be making reference uh, to this here uh, a little later on again. But let's look at, at verses 13 and 14 here. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to be taken hold of it. But one thing I do, this is what I want us to focus in on. One thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. I press on to the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward to Christ Jesus. May God add his blessings to the reading, the proclamation, the understanding of his holy and blessed word. As the new year begins... And I really didn't want to wait till next week to do the New Year's message because by then, we're already into the new year. I want us to be prepared and geared up and revved up as we launch into the new year. But I'm reminded of a lot of things. I'm reminded of the fact that we are one year closer to a lot of our goals. Some of you are one year closer to retirement. Some of you are one year closer to hopefully that promotion that you've been working toward and longing for. Some of you are one year closer to being a daddy or a mother or grandparents. Some of you are one year closer to being a husband or a wife. And we can look at our own lives and see where we're one year closer to a particular goal. But you're also one year closer to our day of death. We are one year closer to the day the Lord returns. We are one year closer to the day that we will all stand before the Lord on that judgment day. That is the day when he will say to us, Come ye, blessed of my Father. Come now and inherit the kingdom I have prepared for you. Or, he will say, as Matthew records in the 25th chapter, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Now, since we are one year closer to all of those goals that we've talked about, but more specifically, one year closer to our own final destiny and how that will be determined, let us use this opportunity a few days before we launch into a brand new year to provoke our thinking about what we have done or maybe not done in this current year and to look at some things that we want to do and we want to accomplish, we want to achieve as we launch into a brand new year. So let me suggest some resolutions for a coming year. I don't know whether you've made any resolutions. I've heard many people say, I just don't make resolutions anymore because I can't keep them. Why well, make them if I can't keep them? I do think that making resolutions, particularly from our spiritual standpoint, is very good. I think it's important, but it's much more important for us to be able to keep those resolutions that, that we make. And my goal here today is to encourage us to better use our time in all that we do so that we can be a greater witness and be more effective for the cause of the kingdom and the Lord's work. I want our lives to count. I want my life to count for something. I think you, you want your life to count for something that's good and wholesome and something that will bring glory and honor to the Lord. Okay, so let's consider this. Has our relationship with the Lord improved in this past year? Has it improved? I really can't answer that for you. You are the one that can best answer. 
Has your relationship with the Lord improved in the past 360 whatever days it is right now? Have you drawn closer to the Lord? Now, you need to bear in mind that a close relationship depends on good communication. That's true with anything. A close relationship depends on good communication. So how good have I been? I'm asking you to ask the same question. How good and faithful have you been in listening to God? Through his word. Through the various ways that he speaks to us. Another year is fastly slipping away. How much time? How much time have we honestly spent in God's Word in this past year? How seriously have we taken our relationship with the Lord? What about, what about a prayer life? How steadfast are we in communicating with the Lord and talking to Him? Those are the things we need to consider because chances are, we talked about being good and being better and more faithful and more committed a year ago. So now let's evaluate. Where are we? 360-something days down the road. See, I believe that any effective communication requires a two-way street. That's to an in relationship. It's certainly true in our relationship with God. If we talk about praying to God, and you've heard me say this many times in other ways, it means that we need to be open-minded, having our ears and our hearts and our mind open so we can hear God when he speaks to us. So remember, any effective communication is a two-way street. It's not just us talking to him. It's us listening as he talks to us. What about our relationship with our fellow brothers and sisters here in the church, in the community of faith? Has that improved in the past year? Has your relationship with one another increased? Are we closer in our fellowship with other people here in the church than we were a year ago? Have we reached out to others? There's a lot of different needs. A lot of needs right here in our, in our church. Have we reached out in helping others meet those needs? Or to be a blessing to others as, as the right doors have opened up for their needs to be met? So every year, every year, every year we have new people that join the church. And, and hopefully, and I always hesitate to say this, because it seems like it doesn't happen if I say it. But that's supposed to happen in 11 o'clock service this morning. Somebody based upon his profession of faith is going to come and join the church. But in the past year, we've had a quite a bit. Have you gotten to know those people? If we put all the people that we've had join this year in front of, how many of you would know their names? See, that's always been important to me. And I can remember way back when I was in college. It was important to me to go table hopping in the dining hall. I wanted to get to know those people. People say, well, I just do that all the time now. I've always done it. Because getting to know people has always been important to me. Getting to know people in the body of Christ, in the family of faith, is important. Because when you get to know them, you get to know their needs. You get to know the positive things that they have to offer. There's a world of good in getting to know other people. Have we gone the, the extra mile in getting to know them? And then what about our relationship with others out there in the world? You know, with um, the WWW now, <laughs> oh, we can communicate with virtually anybody all across the world. And as people of God, as people of faith, we have a very important responsibility to those in the world. That's what the Lottie Moon Christmas offering is all about. In our missionary emphasis in helping others come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. 
And we are to be a positive influence. Jesus told us that we are to be the salt of the earth. And we are to demonstrate a better way. You are to be the light of the world. So, have we made progress this year in developing meaningful relationship with people in the world? By that, I mean, have we been the light of Christ that others can see living in and through us? Have we been the salt of the earth? Are we sharing the gospel and communicating that with others far beyond the perimeters of our building or here in our community? Or are we just like a lot of neighbors these days, in this day and time? When I was growing up, and I'm sure it's true for many of you, when you were growing up, you knew all of your neighbors. You spent time with them. Most people today don't even know their neighbors. They don't spend time getting to know. We have lost that southern hospitality touch. I think it's important to be a people person in getting to know each other. So, another year, another year's come and gone. Have we made good use of our time? The time that the Lord has given us? Or do we look back over the pages of our life and see where, wow, I wasted that day. I wasted that hour. I wasted that week. Things I could have been doing, should have been doing, maybe wasn't doing. Now, as we look at that passage of Scripture that we just read from a few minutes ago, pressing toward the mark of the high calling. And, and there's things I want to put back in my past. To be honest with you, I'm, to some extent, I'm glad I am where I am. I'm at the end of a year. I want a fresh new start. I want to write something good, something positive, something wholesome, something that will glorify God in the pages of my life. Because right now, it's just like yours. It's all pure, it's all white, it's all clean. But time will tell what we write in the pages of our life. Our life is a lot like a diary. And you may not keep a diary and physically and writing things down, but our life really is a diary. So, when I look at that passage there, let me suggest some positive resolutions. First of all, Let's resolve to draw near to God in this new year. And you may have done that this year. You may very, be very pleased with the progress that you've made. But we can still draw near to God in this new year. I think we do that by being right where you are today in worship. Now, now let me say something. One thing that I really admire about my years in the Catholic Church. And I guess it's still true right now. As a Catholic, if you are not in worship or you're not in Mass, and some of you have heard me say this before, and you were not providentially hindered, it was considered a sin to not be in church, to not be in worship. We don't look at that as being a sin. So many people wake up on a Sunday morning, I'm convinced, I say, you know, I've heard Milkweed three times this week. I don't want to hear him again. I, I got something better I want to do. And as a result, we don't find ourselves in worship. And I think that there's honestly some people that during the week, they're formulating some kind of excuses why they don't have to be in church. No, we're not drawing nearer to God when we do that. And if we're not drawing nearer to God, I can't see ourselves really being in the realm and the will of God and where he wants us to be. So my encouragement to you, as well as myself, is to do the things that will allow me to be drawn closer to God. What about being more diligent in my, my prayer life? And for those that have a prayer list and, and constantly we're praying for people. And it's hard for me to really pray the way I need to pray. And pray for the people I need to be praying for. If I don't have something tangible there in front of me. 
saying, Lord, I pray for this person. I pray for this situation, things that's going on. Lord, maybe I haven't seen them in a while. I don't know what's going on, Lord, but you do. I just lift them up right now. There, there's, there's blessings in doing that. What about our own devotional walk? How much time have we spent this year in the Word being drawn closer to God? I think Daniel's custom of praying three times a day is certainly something that we need to emulate in our own lives. And then let's resolve to be drawn closer together as fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. Make it a point. To learn people's names. I think it's very important when we have two services now. Because there's so many people, the 9 o'clock service, don't know people in the 11 o'clock. And vice versa. Now, we will be getting our new church directories here pretty soon. And I'll probably need to go on and tell you, if you haven't already heard, we hit a snag there. Seems like we always do when it comes to our church directories. But there was a little bit of problem between our photographers and, and our representative. And he quit. So uh, we've had to revive all of that in case you wonder why it's taking so long. But we'll be getting those directories here pretty soon. And I know it'll be a delight for some of you because you all can match faces and names. Oh, that's who that is. I didn't know, okay? It's always fun. It's always exciting uh, to do that. But sometimes just a single gesture in reaching out to know somebody is important. I like the gophers that we have in church. And, and I probably have more in the 11 o'clock than I do the 9 o'clock. They see unfamiliar faces here. And as soon as the amen is said, they go to that person. Find out who they are. Welcome them. Say, it's good to have you here. So if you want to be a gopher, you can sign up on the gopher list, okay? Go for them. Let them know that their presence here and this experience of worship is important. And we appreciate them as being a part of that body. And then resolve to get to know non-Christian people. I think it's important. I think I spend a lot of time. Honestly, I spend a lot of time out there in the marketplace with non-Christian people. I enjoy doing that. Because it allows me to share with them some of the things that's going on in my own life. And what God has done for me, God wants to do for you. So those things are very important. Make it an effort to go the extra mile in reaching out. Because I've come to, to realize that there's a lot of people out there that's out of fellowship with God. They would tell us that they are not a believer. I just wait for somebody to reach out to them. And to bring them in. Maybe just a simple hospitality and some neighborly kindness. Opportunities to share our faith. Now I realize that these resolutions can be very simple. Nothing that I have said is really very difficult. They're very simplistic. But I think when we implement those things, they can have some long-lasting effects. In producing the kind of, of lifestyle that is becoming of a body of Christ and increasing closer relationships. Now, one of the things I want to do, I have this go over here. I want to have a closer relationship with God. I want to have a closer relationship with my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. And I want to have, that's my, my, not my stomach growling, okay? Not sure what that is. This mic is very sensitive, and it would pick up stomach growling, but that's not what that is today, okay? <laughs> All right? Um, and I want to have a closer relationship with lost people. Otherwise, I'm just having uh, a social party. And I think God calls us to go beyond that. And doing these things will bless our lives. And we can be a blessing to the church. We can be a blessing to the community. We can be a blessing to the kingdom of God. Time. Time is a very precious commodity. Remember a few years ago, on a New Year's Eve sermon, I went through all the hours and seconds that we have 
in a year's time. And when I think about used it. You know, James was right when he tells us in the fourth chapter of his book, life is a vapor. And we never know how long that vapor of ours will last. So I want to be able to use that vapor to God's glory in my life. I'm closing out with a poem, I hardly ever use, hardly ever, ever use a poem in a sermon. Unless, well, occasionally I have, but very seldom. But let me close out with this. I'll call it a new year, a new beginning. The old year ends, a new begins, with pages clean and new. And what is written on each page will now depend on you. You cannot relive the year that's past, erasing every wrong. For once a year or day is spent, it is forever gone. But don't give up in dark despair if you have failed some test. Seek God's forgiveness and resolve henceforth to do your best. Resolve each precious day to do things good and kind and pure. Though days and years may pass away, these things shall still endure. You know not where your path may lead, nor what's behind the hill. But know that God walks at your side if you will do his will. All things are possible with God though days be bright or dim. So do your best and know that you can leave the rest to him. Just like that passage told us there that we looked at in Philippians. I can't go back and erase the things that I'd like to erase in my, in my life, whether it be this year or any year in the past. But I can wipe the slate clean Start afresh and anew and leave that past to the Lord and trust him in all things. Let's pray. difference would it have made? Where would we be? What would be going on? If history was rewritten, how would it have been? <laughs>